Hi there, my name is Randy McEntee. I'm a flame artist at the Department of External Services and a co-founder of Logic.tv. Welcome to Logic Academy. In today's video, we're talking about the Logic Portal. The Logic Portal is an application available from within Flame that gives you access to community uploaded Python scripts. Created by flame artist Mike Bagnanti, Logic Portal gives you instant access to dozens of time-saving tools. Before we dive in, thanks to Autodesk for sponsoring this video. If you're new to the Logic Portal, here's how it works. Open up a browser, visit pyflame.com, click on the Logic Portal, download the latest version, open up a couple of browsers on your operating system, and I'm just gonna drag this file to opt Autodesk shared Python. It's the same path on Linux and Mac. Once it's there, I'm gonna double click on the zip, extract it, and I already have a version there. That's why it's asking me to overwrite. It's not gonna hurt anything. Now, when I either relaunch the Flame application, hit Control-Alt-PH to rescan the Python hooks, or go to the Flame icon, Python, rescan Python hooks, you can see now I have this handy dandy logic portal. The logic portal is broken down into four sections, Python scripts, matchbox shaders, batch setups, and archives. We're gonna focus on the Python scripts today. Last time I checked, we had over 60 Python scripts available to download for free. Let's check out some of my favorites. This is a combination of the import write node and the people's write node. The import write node, well, it does just what it says. Every time there's a write node and it renders it, it imports it back into your batch schematic. And the people's write node, well, it takes any write node export and creates a quad four ProRes and deletes the EXR sequence. I'm gonna call this write node version 13. Render it out. Here comes the export of the ProRes, and we're all done. You can see here, it's actually deleted this EXR, which I like, because now I can reveal, reveal in Media Hub, and here is my version 13 MOV, and it is in fact a Quad 4 ProRes. So this opens up a lot of workflows and possibilities for pipelines. Next up, we all know how to draw a compass around a clip, but with this, you can select two clips, right click, and encompass selected nodes. The exciting part about this is that any time you have a Python script installed, you can set a keyboard shortcut for that script. In this case, I have space C mapped to my encompass node shortcut. So let's get rid of that. Select these two, space C, now I got a compass. Heck, I could even do it again if I wanted to. Pretty cool. All right, we've all done that thing with the guy in the paint stroke where you add a bunch of paint strokes and you totally forget to set it to sequence and you want all of your beautiful paint strokes to be applied to all of your frames. Instead of manually selecting and choosing sequence, now you can right click, paint node, and use paint strokes to sequence for all. And now, every paint stroke has been applied to the entire sequence. A huge time saver when you make a silly mistake. All right, here's a group of renamers. If I want to change uh, something in this file name from the Media Hub, I have some options now. I can right click, renamers, version up. Oh, seriously, I can change to something else if I wanted to. Great, now I've got a ridiculously long name. And let's say the clients just want the add ID as the name. I can right click, renamers, and keep add ID only. Super helpful tool. All right, next up, 
Let's say you have a lot of clips you need to neat video and reduce noise on. You can select all these guys, neat and denoise selected clips. Now it has automatically added a neat video, color management to bring it back to 16 bit, and a render node with the correct metadata, time code included. Under the flame icon, Pi Flame, Neat Freak Setup, you can even choose to use Right Node workflow with media paths, patterns, open clips, setups, and all of the traditional file export settings at your fingertips. Pretty powerful. Motion vectors. Seems like every shot these days needs something with motion vectors. Well, this will make that a little quicker. Examples, batch, cache and create motion vectors. We can stop this. And this is what it's made for us automatically. Pretty cool. All right, moving on. Ooh, possibly my third favorite. Right click here. And let's say I want to send this to Synthize because I do a lot of camera tracking in Synthize. Right click, Synthize, export to Synthize. I'm going to ignore this little error message because it ain't right. I'm going to choose var temp as my export path, set the path and overwrite because I got some stuff there that's called the same thing. And this export to synthize script is going to make my camera tracking dreams come true. It's exported a JPEG sequence, open synthize, loaded that sequence, and has started caching it. Now, close this and come back, and I can start working in synthize very quickly. If I don't want JPEGs and I want EXRs to take advantage of Synthize's uh, EXR and timecode camera slip trick, I can choose Python, oops, sorry, PyFlame, Synthize export setup, and use any EXR or other image sequence setup uh, export preset that I have saved already. Pretty powerful. Let's say I've done my Synthize camera track and I want to bring it back into Flame. I also have some undistort and redistort workflows to work out. Let's do that automatically at the same time. Right click, import FBX. Here's my FBX, and I'm going to create a scene using the STMAP setup. Load. Here's my selected undistort, which lives in here. And boom, look how quick that was. I've got a resize, which resizes my clip to the new ST map, an action, which provides the undistort for my camera, my camera, with some objects in there too from Synthize, and a comp and a mat output, and a redistort so I can composite my images into my OCN plate flawlessly. Next up, there's some easy ones too. Let's say I want to add some 3D text. Because how often do we add 3D text? Here's some 3D text. Let's one point track it to her glasses. That's done. This is great. But let's say we want to offset our axis and bring it back to the center position. So that an axis and create an inverted axis at current frame. And now our axis has been copied and inverted at that selected frame. Now we don't have to type in any negative numbers anymore. A few other really simple scripts that can save you some more time. Add a G mask, right click, add a G mask, and boom, here's a GMask tracer. And Shift M, oops, sorry. Alt G opens up another GMask tracer because I had that mapped to a hotkey. Alt G and Alt I for the old fashioned legacy GMask tracer. Same thing with MUX nodes. Let's say we want to add a MUX node, add MUX, boom, add a new MUX node. You can also do that with Shift M. 
And this one freezes our MUX at our current frame. Pretty handy. Right click, MUX, freeze frame, current frame MUX. I use this all the time. Some other kind of utility versions of these uh, Python scripts. Right click, reveal, file in Media Hub. This takes me directly to the Media Hub and allows me to copy clips, email producers. Same thing with Clip Path. We can copy Clip Path to Clip. Ugh, say that five times real fast. Copy the Clip Path, Clip Path to Clipboard, Clip Path to Clipboard. Got it. Nailed it. And boom, we just copied our clip path to our clipboard. Ooh, tone twister, nice. All right, another favorite, the batch node menus. You know what? I really love the optics node. And instead of reaching down here for the O, I'd rather just, well, open it somewhere, somehow differently and more quickly. So I can right click batch nodes and create a menu for a selected node. Now, anytime I right click, I can go to batch nodes, and boom, there's an optics. Under the flame menu, pie flame, batch node setups, you can go back and do quite a bit of modifications and customizations of your batch node menus. Pretty powerful. Rendering multiple patches. I've got a couple batches on my desktop and they're pretty long renders, so I'd like to render them both at the same time and go get an early lunch. Select both. Render and render selected batch groups. Mmm, tasty lunch. Here's a custom Python script that I wrote. For my needs, I need to export multiple flame export presets at the same time. And in this script, I can export a quad four and a poster JPEG frame all at the same time. This version is custom to me and my pipeline, so you might need something different. If you do, guess what? There's a script for that. Create export menus. Flame icon, PyFlame, create export menus. We can create export menus at the project or shared level. Let's try a shared level. Let's call this export presets for the win. For my export preset one, we're gonna do a quad four ProRes to my desktop with a project name token and a date and time suffix. Export preset two, after we enable it, I'm gonna choose a poster, J, a poster, ugh, a poster frame JPEG to the same path. And also at the very end of my export, I wanna reveal both the media hub and finder of the latest export. So create, it's done. And now I can do a shared export preset for export presets for the win. This one saves me a ton of time. There we go. My latest exports in both my Finder and my Media Hub. And last but not least, every once in a while, you just need to export a single frame. Right click, export, export current frame, set the path, and you're done. These days, we need all the help we can get keeping our projects running smoothly so we can go home on time. Hopefully, Logic Portal helps you get there. If you have any questions or comments, look me up on the forums at forum.logic.tv. If you enjoyed this Logic Academy, let us know. And if there's something you'd like to see, be sure to drop us a line. I'm Randy McEntee, and you're watching Logic.